Okay, so we are now on part two of our intermediate bash uh, series. In the last one, we looked at how to debug our bash scripts and we're gonna build on from this in these future videos. In this video, I'm gonna show you some refactoring tips and we're gonna have a look at some bad code. I'm gonna show you how to improve it and in doing so, we're actually gonna learn a couple of things about bash. So if you just join me now in VS Code, we'll have a quick look at uh, some of these things. So the first thing we're gonna look at is some bad code. Now, when I say bad code, I don't mean it's not gonna run. This code is gonna work, but I'm gonna show you some code that's not really optimized and it's not um, it's not as good as it could be. It's not, it's not reaching its full potential, okay? That's what I should say, okay, right. So if you, if you write code like this, don't worry. Uh, we have a look at a lot of options on how to uh, refactor it. So I'm just gonna make a, an if feather there. So, you know, this is common now. So someone making a directory, uh, checking if the directory exists, and then they'll do um, something like um, then, and if it exists, do something else, uh, do something else, and in here it'd be like, okay, um, ooh, okay, this failed, um, exit out of that code. But if it does, if it does exist, um, you know, CD into this, uh, directory and then it'll be I know let's just download um, a file off my website or let's just download the home page actually I should say let's just do that okay so that would technically um, work not very optimized but let's just save that and let's just see what happens when we run it and you can see now we pulled it down and in fact actually in this um, folder the reason this has come down as dot one is I've actually got a file in this folder that I'm actually going to use later in one of the bash uh, videos. Um, so you can see actually the w gets renamed my index.html to html.1. Um, but anyway, let's go back to the code. So this code, it looks okay and it's working. How can we make this code better? Okay, so how would we improve this code? So the first thing that I don't like about this code is there's a lot of duplication here. So we're actually declaring uh, the folder three times. So anytime you're declaring something multiple times, it normally means that when you come back to the code and you wanna make a change to the folder or the path, um, there's gonna be three places to change it. Now, if you've got VS code, yeah, okay, I know there's a shortcut, so you could just uh, select and go Control D, Control D, and then you could, um, you know, either uh, delete or you know do whatever it is you're going to do. However, we shouldn't really rely on somebody having access to said and or VS Code or a nice editor with find and replace. And we should really try and optimize our scripts and try to make them um, you know a little bit uh, less high maintenance. Okay, so how would I uh, rewrite this particular piece of code? I mean, there's multiple ways, and let's let's go through a few of these ways. And as we go through these ways, we'll refine this. So. Um, Anytime you're declaring something multiple times, it's always better to have a variable. So what we could have done is we could have gone, um, change this, and we'll call this dir, and then up here, um, I'll do that, and then up here, we could have um, dir equals, like this, then do download. So already now, we've made it a little bit better. There's only one place where we have to uh, change the uh, folder, and that's that's kind of a, made a big improvement already. So that's refined it. Um, the code's still not good, and there's there's lots more we can do with it. But that's that's the first way we can improve it. So what is the second thing that I don't like about this? And um, the second thing is, if we want to make this uh, POSIX compliant, we want to make this more reliable. I wouldn't use uh, the tilde uh, symbol like this. I'd actually use the home um, variable, which will be exposed to all Linux shells. So. If I just make a variable, um, not make a variable, use the variable, uh, the home variable, this will default to whatever the user's home directory is. And it's a lot better um, than relying on that tilde symbol. Um, the second thing is um, when I'm putting variables inside strings, um, it's always a good habit um, to actually wrap them in curly brackets. And the reason is, in this case, um, this, this value would be separated because bash knows that the uh, the forward slash is not going to be part of the variable name. Uh, but if we were concatenating strings, so let me just, for example, take this out here and, and we go back to this. Right now, uh, bash wouldn't know if this whole thing itself is a variable. 
like that, it, it wouldn't have any idea. So what you can do is you can just wrap this to show that this is a distinct uh, variable, and that's what that that will do for us. So that knows that that's the home variable, and then we put the forward slash like that. So that's better than relying on just the tilde. So that's the second thing that's wrong with this script. How else could we improve this script? Okay, so if you look at this script now, there is some uh, fundamental problems here. Uh, the first one is we're not checking before we do the make dir, so we don't know if that directory exists or not. And because we don't know if that directory exists or not, uh, regardless of bash being able to continue, we could actually end up, which we would in a case of running this twice, with an error on the terminal. Now, you don't really want to give your users um, errors they have to deal with on the terminal. Well, not so much deal, but like if I see an error coming from a script, I kind of get the impression that it hasn't been well coded, it hasn't been really um, thought about, and I'm actually a little bit cautious of running it. So if I went to the terminal quickly, and just show you what I mean, um, in this case here, if I was to run a uh, script the first time, you can see the script runs and it pulls down the file. If I was to do control L to clear the screen and I was to run that script again, you can see now that I actually have an error. So this here does not really fill a user with confidence. And you could, if you wanted to at this point, say, okay, well, I can redirect that error rather than um, add the additional verbosity of checking if the, the folder exists already. But then there comes a second problem, and that is um, what if the user is already using their download folder and you're going to pull a file down now which is going to overwrite um, the file in the user's terminal? So how would I actually improve this script? So um, I'd improve it in, in two ways, okay? So the first way I'd improve it is using the make temp command. So let's have a quick look at the make temp. If I type in uh, make temp by itself, it'll make me a temporary file. If I make temp with the D um, after it, it'll make me a temporary directory, okay? Um, now, the good thing about uh, making a temporary directory is it'll make it in the temp folder, and the temp folder uh, will self-clean itself up. So the temporary folder, even though it looks like a physical folder on the system, it's actually technically in memory. So if I shut down the computer and restarted it, um, or shut down the computer and booted it back up, I should say, or restarted it, uh, the temporary directory is going to be cleaned out. So by putting something in the temporary directory, you kind of self-clean in. And also, in addition, because I'm using the make temp command on the command line, uh, I get that randomized uh, string, basically, which allows me to um, avoid name clashes. So it's very unlikely the user is going to have uh, a folder uh, call this on their system. So if I was to use the make temp with a dash D, what I could do is actually do something like this. So if I get rid of that, I'll just make a command substitution here and I'll do make, uh, make temp directory. Let's get rid of that home like that. So that'd be our directory. Uh, we wouldn't need to make it here. So that, that really solves that problem there. So we've got the, uh, and then we've got make temp directory. And then we could do something like uh, CD into the IR. And now here, we're trying to check if this directory exists. And if not, we're going to exit out. What we could actually just do is we could do the double pipe. So if the command to the left uh, is not successful, then we can exit. So by doing that, it means we haven't got to uh, include an exit anyway down here. And we wouldn't have to CD into this directory here. We're not really bothered if the directory exists either at this point because um, Bash is taking care for that for us in the temporary directory. So what we could actually write this as now is if I just get rid of that, and I'll get rid of this, and I'll get rid of this, and I'll take this, copy that, and if I just go to the end here, I could say um, w get this file, or if error, then do echo failed. So already, we've kind of streamlined a lot of our code here. We've made a temporary directory. We've CD'd into it. If the CD doesn't work, so if we can't change directory into it, we've exited it out. Then we're using the wget while we're in that directory. And then we're using the echo command if the wget fails. So we've actually now reduced our code down to three lines. And um, we can actually look at actually further improving this now um, in, in going forward. So. The next thing that I would do to actually improve this is there really is no need 
for us to change directory into any kind of folder to use wget. So once we've created uh, this temporary directory, what we'd actually be better doing is rather than uh, even uh, changing directory into this uh, folder, so let's get rid of that, we can actually just come down here and use the, the dash O option on wget, and then we could use our dir. Again, we're just going to wrap it in these curly like that. And then we could do index.html, so we can name it explicitly, and then we could save that. Now, if we run this, you can see that we've saved our file into this temporary directory, and we've got Bash to do a lot of the work for us, and we've saved ourselves a massive chunk of code, and you can see that we've not got any errors on the page. Uh, this code is self-cleaning up when the machine restarts, uh, and we've actually got a much better finished product. So this is the first example we're going to look at. In the next video, we're going to look at some more an intermediate stroke advanced level bash. Um, and I'll just keep progressing from there. Okay, so I hope, hope you're enjoying this series. Um, hope you're following along. If anything's not clear, put it in the comments. Um, any questions you got, put it in the comments. Anything you want to see in these videos, again, just, just put it in the comments, basically. Um, even if you don't like the videos, just tell me what I'm doing wrong. Um, I hope that was um, uh, at least beneficial for some of you. Um, if you like this video, if you like what I'm doing on this channel, please get a thumbs up, please subscribe and all that goodness. Um, if you don't like it for whatever reason, again, please tell me um, this whole sort of streaming recording thing for YouTube is quite new to me. Um, you know, if you, if you subscribe, if you like, etc., it's only going to give me the motivation to make more videos. And at the moment, we're kind of just sort of playing around with the low level stuff. Um, I really want to get into some advanced stuff. Um, also, on that same note, I am conscious that I am in a rush to get to some advanced stuff. So if I'm missing out some um, explanations of some of the, the, the stuff that I'm doing, some of the uh, elementary stuff, please tell me and I'll loop back and I'll do some videos on those as well. Um, but yeah, just give me feedback, please. And then obviously, uh, I'll try and do better for you guys. But um, until the next video, bless.